Merry Christmas, and Happy Holidays, everybody. While most people are probably writing a wish list to Santa right now, this year I'm giving mine to Lucasfilm. Why, you might ask? Because in my last video of things I want to see from Lucasfilm, I asked for unabridged audiobooks for older books, as well as new covers. And then we got the Essential Legends collection. I asked for collections of harder-to-find EU stories, and we got volumes 1 and 2 of the Insider Fiction collection. I asked for older Star Wars games to be released on PC and newer consoles, and Aspire Media has continued to port more and more Star Wars games over. This is undeniable proof that Lucasfilm watches my videos and takes my advice completely. Well, maybe not, but still, if by the off chance someone from the higher ups is watching, these are top 10 more things I want to see from Lucasfilm. Other than new legend stories, of course. Everyone already knows I want more of that. Number 1. Keep reprinting newer Legends re-releases. Personally, I have already accepted the Legends banner. I accepted the fact that any reprinted books from the Expanding Universe will have the Legends banner on it. And I accepted the fact that these will be in the form of the newer Essential Legends collections for novels and the Epic collections and Omnibuses for comics. However, because these books don't see a large release window for very long, things that only came out a few years ago are practically collector's items at this point. Epic collections and omnibuses are going for hundreds of dollars on Amazon. If, going forward, this is the format that's going to be used for Legends Comics, I would like to at least have continuous reprints like the novels do, and like I'm sure much of the new canon does as well. More reprinted Epic collections and omnibuses means that more people will be exposed to them, and more people will buy them without having to worry about exorbitant fees, and Lucasfilm can make more money. More reprints means bookstore shelves will be more fully stocked with Star Wars content, and both hardcore and casual fans will have a wider selection to comfortably choose from. Less availability means that fans will either have to buy these books secondhand, or just not at all, neither of which would cause Lucasfilm to make a profit. Please keep reprinting newer Legends re-releases especially if they're only a few years old. Number 2. Make the Essential Legends collections essential. Speaking of newer releases, Lucasfilm has begun to release Star Wars Legends in a new trade paperback format called the Essential Legends collections with new covers. And that's very cool. I sure hope a lot of newer fans have been picking these up. I'm overjoyed to hear our classic legend stories are still popular enough to be worth reprinting and released. But what makes this version worth getting compared to previous editions? Why should the diehard EU fan with the completed collection even bother spending any money towards these new collections? In short, why are these books considered the essential version? The 20th anniversary of Timothy Zahn's Heir to the Empire from 2011 had a brand new short story in it, a new introduction, and annotations from the author. If these Essential Legends collections had anything close to that, then I could in good conscience, recommend these books to EU fans who already own them. But instead of adding new content, they're actually subtracting from previous versions. A 2011 paperback republishing of Darth Maul Shadowhunter had two short stories, Saboteur and Restraint. What does the Essential Legends version have? Zero short stories and a preview of a Disney canon book. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy that these books are being reprinted. And with new covers too. And the unabridged audiobook releases that have been coinciding with them are just beautiful. But the books themselves are leaving a lot to be desired. I propose that for the next waves of Essential Legends, brand new short stories that tie in with the novel. They don't even have to be very long. Just something original would be amazing. If the original paperback already had short stories included, for the love of God, leave them in the Essential version. And if possible, have the author give commentary or behind the scenes info on their thoughts and feelings while writing the book. That would be very cool for aspiring writers. And then I can tell every old EU fan who already owns these books that they have to get the Essential Legends collection. Number 3. More Expanded Universe Figures and Merchandise I can't complain about the EU representation when it comes to action figures lately, because we've gotten a whole bunch recently. Darth Malak, Bastila Shan, and Mara Jade were all recently announced, and over the past few years alone, 
we've gotten Black Series figures of Sev, Fixer, Boss, Imperial Senate Guard, Boba Fett from the Droids cartoon, Fordo, Micro Series Mace Windu and Grievous, Zalbar, Darth Maul from the Dark Horse comics, Heir to the Empire Luke Skywalker, Kerr Kanos, Darth Nihilus, Jango Fett from Bounty Hunter, Shadow Stormtrooper, Stormtrooper Commander, Jedi Knight Revan, and Clone Commando Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I have to admit, that is a decent amount, but it is a drop in the bucket compared to all the Star Wars figures that have already been made, and it's merely scratching the surface when it comes to the EU. I can think of dozens, if not hundreds, of more Star Wars characters originating from the EU that could be made into figures. Kyle Katarn, Starkiller, Mitra Surik, Jaden Kaur, Jason Solo, Anakin Solo, Ben Skywalker, HK-47, Sabah Sebatine, Das Jenner, and so on and so on. And that's to say nothing of Star Wars merch outside of figures, like t-shirts, keychains, or Lego sets. We got a Revan backpack recently, so that's pretty cool, but I would like to see even more in the future. And also, number 4, better quality of figures from Hasbro. Speaking of which, I'm not sure if this is a huge problem with new canon figures or not, but there's been a lot of questionable quality decisions coming from Hasbro in regards to their Black Series line. Don't get me wrong, I'm super happy to get these figures, but they could use some tweaking. For example, the Delta Squad members look really weird. They're a lot more skinny and less detailed than their video game counterparts. I think it's because instead of creating a commando mold for them, they reused a mold from a Bad Batch character. The Imperial Senate Guard figure from the Force Unleashed has the wrong armor because they copied the Imperial Royal Guard figure. And let us not forget, the Kirk Kanos figure was shipped out with the wrong name on his box, and no one caught it until the customers called it out. The Arc Trooper based on Fordo from the Micro Series is just a repaint of Arc Trooper Echo's figure, leading to more armor inaccuracies. And Micro Series Grievous, the one figure that I wouldn't mind being a little more off-model and cartoony to represent the insane monster that he was from Gindy's Clone Wars, is just a direct repaint from his original figure. I think there are some figures that you could get away with a simple repaint. And they have, for sure. But there are many characters who have unique body types and accessories that a simple remold can't do justice. There are fans right now creating amazing customs, even better than what Hasbro is putting out. I don't think it would be too difficult if Hasbro just dialed up the effort slightly, and not treat these characters like cash grabs. Then I think collectors would be very pleased with the quality. Number 5. Adding a higher page count to Marvel Omnibuses The Marvel Omnibuses have been one of the most recent formats that Lucasfilm is reprinting Legends Comics, which have really kicked off last year with the release of the Old Republic Omnibus. It contained all of the issues of John Jackson Miller's Knights of the Old Republic comic run for a total of about 1,300 pages. Subsequent omnibuses, however, clocked in at about 1,000 pages, which is still quite a lot, only the market price of these collections remain the same at $125. Now I suppose I could just ask for price cuts to these omnibuses, but a lot of sites like Amazon have been doing that anyway. And for the most part, I just want these omnibuses to be all-encompassing, and if they could come even slightly close to the 1300 page count of the Old Republic omnibus, then I'd feel a lot better about dropping lots of cash on them. So how would they go about doing that? Simple. Add every tiny little thing that could be construed as content. Add obscure comics that people haven't even considered adding to omnibuses yet. Add web comics that have never been physically published. Add notes, letters, and interviews from the authors. Add even more variant covers and concept sketches, if possible. Add some old advertisements or promotional material that were talking about these comics. Squeeze some insider or hyperspace short stories in there too. I don't care. Any or all of these would make the omnibuses seem more worth it. And people will feel like they've gotten more bang for their buck. Because they would have. Number 6. A Legends-focused Disney Plus show. Probably the most ambitious ask on this entire list, but I don't think it's without merit. These days, the future of Disney canon 
seem to go all in on streaming, especially over these last three years. There are a huge amount of shows planned to come out on Disney Plus for the new canon. I don't see why they couldn't also create one for Legends, especially since there are already Legends cartoons like Clone Wars, Ewoks, and Droids already on Disney Plus. Furthermore, there is an anime anthology called Visions, which is neither Legends nor new canon, so they have no problem creating non-canon shows for this platform. A live action show would be awesome, and it doesn't even have to be very long. They could do something akin to the Old Republic cinematic trailers. Or they could do an animated show, whether it's something original or an animated adaptation of pre-existing Legends works. I welcome either option. It would be fairly expensive, I'm sure. But with a growing audience on this streaming service, you could potentially win over a lot of viewers. Number 7. Make the Old Republic Great Again A list of improvements that could be made to the Old Republic MMO could probably fill several videos. But if the Old Republic is going to continue into the future, I think a lot could be changed moving forward. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy that the game is still being made and still has many fans. This is the only source of new Legends content after all. But the updates have just been so lacking. Each grand new expansion lately has been just a few hours of gameplay at most. I want the content to be worth it. The Knights of the Fallen Empire and Knights of the Eternal Throne expansions were massive compared to what we have now. If we could have half of what we got prior to 2016, it would be amazing. How about new original storylines specific to your character's class? Or maybe a couple of new story classes altogether? I know what I'm asking for would be a lot more development time, and of course you gotta hire voice actors and so on, but for the longevity of this game, it's necessary. Since Bioware doesn't have to worry about developing Anthem anymore, they can focus more resources on SWOTOR. Number 8. Respect the Indiana Jones EU A lot like Star Wars, there is also an Indiana Jones expanded universe that I don't think is quite as well known, but it exists, and it's valid to the continuity. Unlike Star Wars, the Indiana Jones EU hasn't been tossed aside and rendered non-canon. Keeping a single continuity for as long as something like Star Wars or Indiana Jones have been around is very impressive. It's ambitious, and fans respect that all the stories they read matter. That being said, next year, Indiana Jones 5 The Dial of Destiny is going to be released. I have no idea if it'll be good or not, but at the very least, please, director James Mangold, respect the continuity of the Indiana Jones EU. I know Lucasfilm hired J.J. Abrams for Star Wars Episode 7, and they had to wipe their ass with the Star Wars EU so that they could give Star Wars a lazy, unplanned reboot. But James Mangold, you are not J.J. Abrams. You are better than J.J. Abrams. You are not a lazy screenwriter that falls into every beginner's trap. Make a kick-ass movie, but don't reboot the Indiana Jones EU. Number 9. More recognition online. This is fairly straightforward. I want the EU to be given more recognition and love by official Star Wars accounts online, or have more articles on StarWars.com talking about the EU. Star Wars is a very widespread fan base, with people that have been around for many decades. I would like it if every once in a while, the people running those online accounts would just give a little more credit towards the expanded universe. You know, make various posts about what events transpired in a story, post a few panels of a comic, or what book came out that day years ago. Just because the EU is no longer being continued, doesn't mean that you have to stop talking about it forever. And unlike every other idea on this list, giving more shoutouts to the EU is 100% free, and incredibly easy to do. There are dozens of Star Wars fan accounts that do this already. And number 10. More international releases. Something that I always love talking about in my news update videos are the international releases of Star Wars books. I mention countries like France and Italy getting reprinted books and comics all the time. But I would love for that segment to just take up 20 minutes just mentioning every country that is getting reprinted Legends comics. Star Wars is a worldwide brand and phenomenon, 
no doubt that Legends books getting re-released and translated across the globe would benefit Lucasfilm a great deal. Get those rights worked out and start releasing Legends books across the whole planet. You couldn't ask for a better way to create new Star Wars fans and communities than this. And that's my list of 10 more things that I want to see from Lucasfilm. I expect the Lucasfilm rep watching this to take all these ideas back to their bosses so that we may see all these changes take effect in the next year or two. But for now, I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday.